After studying this chapter, you should be able to understand paradigm shift, from agents to principles, in the travel business. Enumerate the requirements to set up a travel management company, TMC. Understand the five basic functions of a TMC. Understand the departmental structure and job descriptions of a TMC, and differentiate the DOT accreditation from the LGU license or permit. A travel management company, TMC, can be defined as an entity engaged in arranging and selling transportation, accommodations, tours, and trips for travelers in which these are the different travel components needed by a tourist to have a better travel experience. The foregoing definition combines both the traditional and the new way of conducting the business of travel. The traditional way is still being practiced by some TMCs in the Philippines. In the traditional way, the commercial enterprise conducts the business of travel as an agent or broker for the travel services providers that cater to the needs of the travelers, namely, transportation and cruise companies, accommodation establishments, activity and recreation centers, car rental companies, tour operators, and sightseeing companies among others. These commercial entities are not owned, managed, or operated by the TMC. In the traditional way the TMC acts as a middleman between the vendor and the vendor. The vendor communicates with the middleman, and the middleman communicates with the vendor, and vice versa. The vendor and the vendor do not communicate each other. The middleman reacts to the needs of the vendor, while acting as a broker for the vendor. Example, a tourist is our vendor would like to travel from the Philippines to Japan which would like to purchase a ticket from a travel agent. The travel agent will look for the best rate they could offer to the tourist and will now communicate with Philippine Airlines, as our vendor or supplier, to book and reserve a seat to provide to our vendor as her means of transportation. The travel agent serves as the middleman between the Philippine Airlines, the vendor or supplier purchased by tourists which the vendor who will receive the product. Negotiations are made from the vendor and purchased by the vendor. man the TMC collects a broker's commission from the vendor, this business model is defined as a rate minus, a selling rate minus a commission. Alternately, the broker is allowed to unilaterally mark up a net cost given by the vendor. This is known as net plus, a net rate plus a markup. In other words, in the traditional way, the broker's commission is predetermined and the markup is subjective, and both the commission and the markup are hidden from the vendor. A progressive TMC adopts the new way of doing business by harnessing the available technology, expanding the travel industry linkages with the expertise and professional service orientation of the organization and evolves into a principal and vendor of travel solutions. The TMC forms a tripartite alliance wherein all parties are treated as partners, equally sharing data and information, and mutually benefiting from open communication and information exchange. For short, the new way is all prices from the vendor or supplier are both available for the TMC and the vendor which now can be seen from travel websites which can be purchased by both the middlemen and the vendor. The TMC is a partner to both, vendor and vendor. It provides the individual traveler with the most suitable suppliers based on the vendor's needs, convenience and price, thus he evolves from an order taker to an order maker. The TMC is no longer an order taker because it examines and evaluates the order of the vendor for preferences and budgets and determines the best travel arrangement and on this basis becomes an order maker. The TMC manages all of the vendor's travel process for professional or service fee described as cost plus, in short it provides the best travel solution for a professional fee. In the new way travel management companies need to discard the role of brokers and evolve to the role of principals whose main service is travel information, advice and facilitation of travel.
computerized reservations systems have been available to travel entities since over 30 years ago. Today, these systems not to only perform reservations functions for airlines and other travel suppliers, but have evolved into global distribution systems GDS, that include electronic marketing and sales functions as well. One example is the Amadeus system which is a travel platform that brings together all relevant travel content, including air, hotel, ground transport, destination services, and insurance, from any source to be distributed via any channel or device, allowing comparisons and bookings to happen in a uniform and transparent way. Airlines and travel agencies have been using global distribution systems, also known as a GDS, for over 30 years. Traveling today would be difficult without a GDS. To understand how the travel industry moves, you need to understand how global distribution systems connect the world. In this video, we will learn how a GDS connects suppliers with distributors. Let's first see how a GDS functions. A GDS is an online network for companies within the travel industry. It can connect travel agencies, cruise lines, hotels, car rental companies, and airlines. A GDS takes the content from suppliers and makes it available to distributors. Let's take airlines as an example of a supplier and a travel agency as a distributor. Airlines have reservation systems that keep track of their inventory. The inventory is the number of seats that are booked or available to book. The GDS has access to this inventory through a contract. The GDS then gives this access to travel agencies. If a travel agent were to book a seat, the GDS makes sure that the information is sent to the airline's reservation system and the inventory is updated. Just like in this airline example, a GDS has access to many other suppliers. To illustrate this, let's see how Gene, books his trip to another country. Gene calls his travel agency to book a flight from Atlanta, Georgia in the United States to Cape Town, South Africa. He needs a hotel and a rental car for the three weeks that he will be there. The travel agent then uses a GDS to access thousands of flights from hundreds of airlines and thousands of hotel and car options for Gene. The GDS filters all these options to give the travel agent the best set of travel options. After reviewing these options with Gene, the travel agent can then use the same GDS to book multiple flights from multiple airlines and reserve the hotel and rental car. Because of this vast network of suppliers through the GDS, Gene has access to the best possible travel options through his travel agency. Global distribution systems are vital for the ever-growing travel industry. As more suppliers and distributors pop up, the need for access to the expanding network continues to grow. A GDS helps suppliers reach more travelers and helps agencies give travelers more options. Now you understand how a GDS functions within the travel industry. But before we go, let's review how a GDS connects suppliers and distributors. A global distribution system is an online network for travel suppliers and distributors. The GDS has contracts with suppliers like airlines, to access their inventory. The GDS gives this access to distributors, like travel agencies. The travel agencies can then use the GDS for a thorough search of travel options. Then the GDS can be used to both search and book these travel options. By using a global distribution system, the travel industry can reach farther. Today some GDS have online version geared for the general traveling public as well. The internet as a source of travel information, e-rates, and online bookings and confirmations direct capability with the vendors has further expanded the volume of information and choice available to the traveler today. These advances in communications technology have eroded traditional way of doing business. A TMC like any other commercial enterprise doing business in the Philippines requires a legal personality before it can transact legitimate business. There are three types of business establishments in this country, sole or single proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. A single individual owns a sole or single proprietorship business establishment.
Partnership in business is owned by at least two individuals. Corporation most common entity of a business set up for TMCs and it requires a minimum of five, five, investors. In putting up a business, there are several government agencies you have to register with depending on the type of your business. These agencies include among others the following. Department of Trade and Industry. It is necessary to register your single proprietorship business with the DTI to provide it with a legal identity and gain the rights to use your business name. Remember that a business name registration is not a license to operate a business. Securities and Exchange Commission. It is essential for a partnership or a corporation to register with the SEC in order for them to be treated as a legal or judicial entity. Cooperative Development Authority All cooperatives are required to register with the CDA as per Republic Act 6938-6939. Local Government All businesses, whatever the legal form are required to secure a mayor's permit or municipal license from the city or municipality where they are located. Permits or licenses are required to ensure that the standards are met and that business complies with the specific requirements of the business locale. Registration procedure varies across cities and municipalities. To view the list of local government units (LGUs), please visit the Department of Interior and Local Government website. Bureau of Internal Revenue Every business enterprise has to register with the BUR for taxation purposes. The Bureau will furnish your business with its own tax identification number, TIN, and the authority to print receipt, invoices, and others. The DOT accreditation is certificate issued to document that an establishment has compiled with the department's minimum standards of its operations to ensure the comfort and convenience of its clients. It is important to note that a DOT accreditation for TMCs is a requirement prior to the application for a LGU business license or mayor's permit, provided it proposes to directly facilitate and service the travel and tour needs of client and is therefore classified as a primary tourism enterprise. Outbound travel agencies are excluded from this requirement as they are classified as secondary tourism enterprises. After compliance with all the requirements under the rules, a certificate of accreditation shall be issued to the applicant upon payment of an accreditation fee of 1,100 pesos per annum for main office and 550 pesos for each branch. The certificate of accreditation shall be valid for a period of one year from the date of issuance thereof. The representatives of the department shall have access to agency's records for verification of compliance with the requirements of the department. ATMC's five main functions are Provide information and expertise First-time traveler will always seek to acquire as much information as possible on the destination country prior to travel. Normally. This starts with the how to get there, airline schedules, fares, flight, arrival and departure times, and progresses to the where to stay and what to do. Some travelers today prefer to surf the various travel websites that populate the internet to acquire this information. However, the number of possible websites available for sourcing the information is enormous making this a tedious task that can prove to be time consuming. For the TMC the amount of travel information available in the Internet can serve to enhance the capability to give this service, provided the TMC staff is abreast of the ever-changing data in the Internet. To maximize this source of information it may be necessary to have full-time staff doing research work to strengthen the service. Having this in-house research facility enables the counter staff to give the desired information quickly while assessing the needs and requirements of the traveler. For those who seek the information the traditional way, this initial exchange is important because the traveler gets most of the information desired, while enabling the TMC counter staff to accurately assess the needs and requirements of the traveler. For instance, it is during this initial exchange that the travel agent is able to determine whether the prospective traveler is in need of travel documents, such as the passport. 
This need offers an opportunity to provide additional assistance for a fee. Recommended destinations, products, and services best suited to the needs of the client. Once needs of the prospective traveler are correctly identified, the TMC counter staff is now able to recommend a specific mode of transportation or an airline schedule best suited to the travel needs of the client. The TMC counter staff can also recommend the hotel best suited to the client's location preference, budget, and purpose of travel. Lastly, the staff can recommend activities that would live up to the client's expectations of the forthcoming trip. These recommendations must be impartial, in that the traveler's interest, comfort, and convenience take precedence over anything else. This function of the TMC is definitely not available from various travel websites in the Internet and presents the best example of the personalized aspects of travel management. No matter how attractive and upbeat the travel websites in the Internet is, it will always be partial and self-serving and the clients will be left to make their own decision. Thus the Internet will never substitute the personalized recommendations provided by humans. Processes Travel Arrangement Processing travel arrangements means the placing of reservations, obtaining confirmations, and issuing corresponding travel and tour documents in behalf of the suppliers. Once a prospective traveler has digested the information provided and has accepted the offered recommendations of the TMC staff the commercial transaction begins when the traveler requests that reservations be made in his slash her behalf. It is at this point that the traveler is considered captured and becomes a client. The placing of reservations by the TMC in behalf of the client is the first step of travel operations which is followed by obtaining a confirmation from the suppliers. Determining the total cost of travel arrangements, whether these are rate minus, commissionable, or net plus or cost plus travel management fee and collecting the set amount s is the next step. The last step of the processing of travel arrangements is the issuance of the transportation documents and tour slash exchange vouchers, and of course thanking and wishing the traveler a pleasant trip provides assistance in securing travel documents. A TMC provides assistance in securing the necessary documents for travel, such as passport and visas, and immigration clearances. If travelers do not have the necessary travel documents, the TMC will provide assistance in securing these, for a fee. The key operative word here is provides assistance since these documents are processed by the respective government agencies and foreign embassies involved. Like everything else nowadays, the Internet has automated some phases of the processing of these documents. Visa applications may now be filled out and filed online. Visa fees may also be paid online. However, the human advice provided by the TMC staff can never be replaced. Monitoring the progress and the outcome of the travel arrangements made are integral components of this function. Assist in cases of refunds and cancellations. In the event the travel arrangements made for the client's trip were not availed of in full or in part, due to circumstances beyond anybody's control, and legitimate claims for refunds are in order, the TMC will assist the client to secure these from the suppliers. This assistance extends to changes in the travel arrangements that require additional payments or refunds. Characteristics of TMC The TMC as an arranger of travel services is primarily a retailer since it transact business and sell directly to the end user. Its clients are the end users. The TMC slash travel agents are the retail part of the distribution chain. However, the tour department or the tour operator, of the TMC would be wholesalers since its clientele are the retailers who sell directly to the end user. Its clients are the TMCs or the intermediaries. The TMC also acts as counselor slash advisor to the end user and as agents and slash or intermediaries for the suppliers. Since they are expert in the field, they can suggest and recommend what would be the best travel needs for the tourists and help the supplier reach its maximum sales through selling the travel products to the market. TMCs derive revenues from a predetermined fixed commission dictated by the suppliers of travel services or from a professional fee negotiate with the client. Occasionally, 
when provided with net rates, TMCs unilaterally mark up to generate revenues, and TMCs charges fees for ancillary service such as travel documentation, passport, and visa. Like most commercial establishments, a TMC is organized along three principal activities, namely, administration, marketing, and sales and operations. Administrative activities involve all functions of the organization that concern effective management of the company in terms of record-keeping, monitoring finances, the well-being of the staff and general maintenance and upkeep of the office premises and equipment. Administrative Department This department is common to all commercial enterprises and business entities and is necessary for the conduct of the day-to-day -day business activities pertaining to its management. Within this area of responsibility are the legal aspects of the organization, which are normally handled by lawyer on a retainer basis. This aspect of the company is necessary for a, accidents, b, third-party liability coverage, and c, labor relations with the company employees. The insurance needs of the company also fall under the area of general administration. Insurance coverage is normally required for a, accidents, b, financial losses, and c, others, such as fire, burglary, and employees' health care, pension and retirement. The purchase and maintenance of furniture, furnishings and office equipment, from telephones to computers, from chairs to tables, and from air conditioning units to lamps are also under the care of general administration. Lastly, the formulation of company policies, standard operating procedures, company forms, filing systems, and electronic data and information processing systems and the like are part of general administration. The general manager or the assistant general manager normally undertakes the supervision of these functions in the absence of the former. For large corporations managed by a member of the board of directors, the title of this position is managing director. The support staff of general administration in small organizations is the secretary. Larger organizations assign an executive assistant, administrative officer, or administrative assistant to back up the manager in these functions. The management and development of human resource is an integral part of the administrative department. This aspect involves hiring policies and compensation schemes, specifically the qualifications required of prospective employees and compensation packages commensurate to the applicant's credentials. The education and training of the staff, particularly in work-related skills, such as those required for the global distribution systems and training in the handling of travel documentation fall under the purview of the personnel officer. Evaluation of staff performance in order to determine merit increases in monthly compensation, or the personnel officer conducts written warning of poor performance on a regular basis. The personnel officer also decides on disciplinary actions to be imposed on erring employees for violation of company policies and office rules and regulations. For every large organization general administration has a separate section labeled General Services section. This section is responsible for services required in the day-to-day -day operations of the organization and that includes specialized services in security, security guard sanitation, janitorial, maintenance, refrigeration and electrical, and communications, IT software and hardware technicians. Most often these service requirements are outsourced. The accounting section handles all records of the company, including all pertinent government licenses and permits. This section is also responsible for the custody of accountable forms, such as provisional-slash-official receipts, invoices, purchase orders, tour vouchers, and suppliers' tickets stocks. The accountant is also responsible for the implementation of the company policies pertinent to billings, credit, and collection. The formulation of the budget and monitoring payables and receivables are also part of accounting. The bookkeeper, the accountant's backup, in small organizations, this person does the billing officer's functions as well, has the following primary duties and responsibilities. 
Finance section. This section is represented by the cashier who handles records and acts as custodian of all the money collected and dispersed. The finance person assists the general manager in the cash flow management of the organization. This department's functional activities are divided into marketing and sales. Sales are either at the counter, for walk-in clients, or field sales, for corporate accounts. Disseminating information about the organization and its products and services and creating opportunities for sales that will bring revenues to the organization. Another function of the marketing and sales department is to keep abreast of development in the market. To briefly differentiate these two functions, marketing is everything that is done to create awareness about a company, its products, and its services and create sales opportunities, while sales is the desired result of marketing. Counter sales are transactions captured by the travel counselors or counter staff that is always geared to service walk-in clients. These are the result of good information sharing and suitable and attractive recommendations. Field sales on the other hand are transaction captured by the account executives or sales agents or representatives outside the office premises and as a result of predetermined solicitation of business. Account executives act as field travel counselors, they, however, have sales plans and patterns to implement and take time to follow up sales leads. In the Philippines, most sales representatives are freelancers, earning commissions rather than salaries. The operations department is the core of the TMC slash travel agency business. It is primarily engaged in the efficient and effective delivery of the organization's services as an intermediary or as agents of travel suppliers. Operations department has two sections, one for travel operations and the other for tour operations. The players of travel operations department are, the manager, the travel supervisor and the documentation supervisor, the travel counselors or counter staff, the reservations and ticketing officers, and the liaison officer. The managerial and supervisory job functions vary depending on the size of the organization and the company's policies in this regard while the line functions of the operations staff remain practically the same regardless of the travel agency's size. Tour Operations Department is organized along the concept that tour operations involve both office activities or office operations and field operations, one complementing the other in a manner that the areas of responsibility are clearly defined. The office side consists of contracting rates, terms, and conditions with the suppliers and tariff costing, the calculation of rates per service, including those for regular tour packages. These are activities conducted either on a yearly or ad hoc basis and are handled by the tour operation manager. The day-to-day -day activities include preparing quotations for ad hoc requests and requesting reservations and obtaining confirmations. Field operations consist of meeting slash sending off clients referred to as meet and assist and overseeing the actual delivery of services purchased, known as monitoring field operations. A small-sized TMC slash travel agency would have no more than 10 employees, with the manager supervising all the three departments. On the administrative side, the backup staff would be made up of a secretary, a bookkeeper, a cashier, and the utility staff for janitorial and messenger services. Operations would have a travel counselor or counter staff, backed up by ticketing and reservations staff, and a liaison officer. The manager would act as the marketing person, backed up by an account executive to perform the sales functions. To reduce the staff costs, the accounting functions would be outsourced. A medium-sized TMC slash travel agency would have about 20 or so employees, with three department heads, and the upper management made up of a general manager, an individual to oversee all electronic data and manage the automated systems and procedures, an assistant general manager backed up by a secretary. A large-sized TMC slash travel agency would have at least 30 employees headed by the managing director or a general manager 
the former being a stockholder and member of the board of directors, the latter, an employee. These would be backed up by a deputy managing director or assistant general manager. A controller would oversee the management of the company's database and oversee electronic and automated systems and procedures would be in place. An executive assistant would augment the upper management competent. Organizational structure will depend upon how big is your travel agency company. The more that you have customers the more that you need employees to attend their needs.